Hey everyone, it's Jamie Slays, and in today's video, we're gonna cover guitars that are so rare and desirable, I'll probably never ever get my hands on them. To make it easier to understand, every guitar on this list will have some criteria. Why is it rare? Why do I like it? Why is it on my list? And what makes me want it? But what makes these guitars so special? Let's find out. So in at number one, James Hetfield's Ken Lawrence Explorers. Why are the Ken Lawrence Explorers rare? So obviously I'm not talking about James Hetfield's actual guitar, because that's literally gonna be impossible, but specifically the ones that Ken Lawrence makes. They're rare because he doesn't make very many very often. Ken Lawrence puts a lot of epic detail into his guitars. If you've seen them before or you're a fan of Metallica, you'll know that the Explorer Ken Lawrence is pretty much like everyone's favorite. Well, at least it's one of my favorites has a really cool headstock, has some really cool fretboard designs. He always uses epic quality top woods as well. Those kind of things will probably make it really rare, mainly because they're one of one usually. So when he makes you one, it's a custom one for you. So there's only one made. He doesn't really make production models, especially the James Hetfield ones. He has quite a few of them and they're all like one of one. There aren't very many that he makes for the same one. But also what makes it rare is Ken is basically a one man operation. He makes X amount per year. There are groups on Facebook where you can join and you can actually order your own. And there's a pretty hefty waiting list, but that makes it rare. I've never really seen one um, in person and I've never really seen one to buy as well. Now, why do I like them? So I remember watching Cunning Stunts uh, when I was a teenager getting into Metallica. <laughs> And I remember James playing his, I think it was with the song One. Looks super cool as well, because the headstocks are really pointy and the fretboard inlay that James had was really nice. And I think that was possibly the first one that he had, and now it's the first of many. They are quite expensive, but I think they're justified because it's pretty much one person making them and you know it takes time to make something that good. So that's why it's on my list. And the main reason why I really want one is because then I can play Metallica songs and be just like Papa Het. Ha <laughs> um, I don't know, they're great, aren't they? They look amazing, um, they sound amazing, they're pointy, but they also are quite classic looking. There you go, that's why I want one. They combine the absolute brilliance of traditional styles with modern stuff, and you can customize them however you like, that's why. So the second one on the list is the Washburn Dime Slime. <laughs> so that's the green one with the kind of quilted maple top and the pointier headstock. What makes it rare? So they didn't make very many of these and they have USA customs and imports as well. Dime wasn't with Washburn for very long. So that means they weren't making them for very long. So again, they're probably limited. And everyone who's got one is most likely a Dimebag fan or a Pantera fan. And especially now since he passed, rest in peace, and Dean no longer make them because of the lawsuit with the Dime estate, they're probably holding on to them and they're probably never gonna let them go for love nor money. I remember obsessively watching the Ozfest footage of Pantera. I think it was the last time they played Ozfest as a band. And I loved it, I watched it all the time. And Dime plays a few Washburns in that video, specifically in the song This Love, he plays his Dime Slime. And I was like, whoa, what's that VW sticker? What's the relevance of that? And I loved it. I love green, it's a great color. And I just loved how it sounded and how it looked. And I was hooked straight away. Why is it on my list? Why do I want one so much? Well, like I said, they're really hard to get hold of. I've got a friend, um, Dom. Hi, Dom. who has one, and I've never played it. I'd love to play his if he'd let me. And I've got a friend, Eric, in Canada. Hi, mate. Who's got two, I think. He may have one that's his, and he had another one that he might have been borrowing, but I think one is signed. And yeah, I just love them. I think they look and sound great. Um, even my Dean one, which is like a Chinese import, actually sounds amazing. <laughs> There's so much wood, so they resonate quite a lot. And if you're a massive Pantera fan like me, of course, you're gonna want one or at least any of his guitars. On the tale of why it's on my list and what makes me want it, I guess the rarity also then, in some ways, like magpies, we all then want them more because they're harder to get hold of. So if you see one, you wanna snatch it up. But they're incredibly expensive. I think they're like $11,000, if not more. And then Dean being sued by the Dime Estate and no longer being allowed to make Dean versions means 
any you find will be incredibly highly priced. I think even my Chinese Dean ML has now shot up in price. I probably won't be getting rid of it anytime soon because I love it and it's nostalgia. But yeah, it somehow makes me want it more. So number three on the list is Black Machine Guitars. For those of you who've never heard of Black Machine, they are a UK based custom company. I'm pretty sure it's just one person um, and they now don't really do it anymore. So that makes them rare for starters. I only heard about them from people like Nolly Get Good, Misha, um, the guys in Belief From Within, a band called Tides of Virtue, but I'm pretty sure the guys in Sixth had them as well. Blown away by this guy's work. You know, I played Nolly's uh, B2 and I couldn't afford that, but I knew at the end of that conversation I had to own something that this guy had made. So they're mega rare because they don't really make them anymore and they were made basically by one person. Why do I like them? Well, I, I love this philosophy behind guitar. Make it thin, lightweight. They're super strat shapes, which I love. They have very simplistic look. They're kind of just plain looking unless you want to pay extra for like a quilted maple top or something like that. This B6 is a bare essential version. You know, there's really nothing to it. This guitar shouldn't be as amazing as it is. And to me, it's just kind of bare bones and they sound great from what I've heard. Like a lot of these guitars, I've never actually seen one in person or played one, but I really want one because of that reason. But everyone who I know who's had one or has one loves them and there must be a reason why. Why is it on my list? They're revered as being like the pinnacle of custom guitar building, especially in the UK and Europe. Um, and like I said, I know a lot of people who've made their own variation on it. So it must be that they're doing something right. Nolly Get Good had three, I think. And I think he sold one to Goonzi from Belief Within. Martin Evans, who now plays for Architects, um, he had an Ibanez RG2920, yeah! which he bought after or got from Ibanez as an endorsement. I can't remember which one it was because of Nolly's Black Machine, because he loved it so much. He then sold that guitar to me. You may have seen it in lots of my videos. And that is beautiful. It has like a quilted maple top and it's called a tiger eye. And it looks very similar to Nolly's one, if not almost very, very similar. What makes me want one? Initially, I just want to be able to try one. So if anyone's got one, Nolly, can I borrow yours? Um, I want to try it. Someone let me borrow one. <laughs> Number four. So this isn't necessarily a specific guitar, but Steve Vai's signature models. The UV777 and the GEM777 LNG, which is Loch Ness Green, they're rare, they're super hard to get, specifically because they only made a limited number of them. Like for example, the 777, the rumor is they made 777, but I don't think that's true. And I think there's a mixed up uh, amount of each color. Why do I like them? Ever since I went to Japan in 2018, I came back obsessed with the swirly colors and the bright neon colors. And I went through a bit of a neon melon phase if you were around at that point. Um, I eventually did get a Gem 777 in Desert Yellow, which has now been signed by Steve, which was amazing. But I'd love a green one because green's one of my favorite colors. Green and pink are absolutely great at clashing with one another. And I love the UV777 because it's green seven string with green and yellow pickups. My friend James McIlroy has about two or three or five or 10. I can't remember how many he has, but he has loads and I'm so jealous and that makes me want it even more. Why is it on my list? Um, like I said, they're really hard to get hold of. Pretty much the same as every guitar on this list. They're on my list because I really, really want one. I played a, a Loch Ness Green in Japan, but it was the 30th anniversary reissue, not the original like 1989 or 1988 or whichever year it was. Also, I was born in 1988. So I think one of the allures of that was that it was the same year I was born. So yeah, that's why it's on my list. Um, what makes me want one? That pretty much. It was the year I was born. They play really well. They're super cool. They're bright colors. Steve, I made them um, mainly because they're really hard to get hold of and they look super cool and they'll look lovely on a guitar rack here. But again, I think they're like $12,000, $20,000. They're absolutely obscene prices. And Steve, Vai is not even dead yet. So I'm not wishing anything, but you know, if and when he does, Hail Mary's, uh, I'm sure the prices will rock it right up. So. That's what makes me want one now because I know I'll never be able to afford one, but I've got a few friends who've got them, so I probably could play them at some point, but it probably won't be anytime soon and I probably won't be able to buy one. So yeah, that's why I'm lusting after any of the kind of Steve Vai guitars. <laughs> and the last one on the list is... ESP Lawsuit Guitars. So I was initially gonna put the Kirk Hammett Lawsuit Headstock Guitar, you know, the one with the headstock that looks like Jackson guitars, but then I realized 
ESP aren't allowed to make Explorer shapes for James Hetfield anymore either, so I'm going to put both in, and being the absolute Metallica sycophant that I am, it makes total sense. Why are they rare, you ask? Well, there was a lawsuit with uh, Gibson and ESP, and I think it was around 2020, 2021, where ESP are no longer allowed to export from Japan the Explorer shape. So they used to actually make MX250s, I think, in the custom shop up until then. So now that makes them really rare because you can't get them, you can't order them, but you can buy them if you can find them used and they're really expensive. And then the Kirk Hammett pre-lawsuit headstock, which I think they stopped making for him around the 90s, early 90s, around the Black Album era, they stopped a long time ago because of the way it looks. Um, it looks very much exactly like the Jackson headstock. So they got told off, they got a slap on the wrist and that makes them rare because they just don't make them anymore. Why do I like them? Well, I'm a Metallica super fan. Well, not that I'm a super fan, but I love Metallica. Uh, Kirk Hammett was one of the reasons why I started playing lead guitar stuff and I can't really do it very well, but James Hetfield is my favorite rhythm guitarist ever and he's a great singer as well. Um, I recently got a jailbreak Italian custom uh, Explorer shape modeled after the ESP MX250, I think. Uh, thank you again very much. I do love it. And it's got my logo on the 12th fret and all that kind of stuff. It's beautiful. And that was because I knew I was never going to be able to get a real one, um, an ESP one or uh, a Ken Lawrence one, which I talked about at the beginning of the video. So that's why I like them. But again, basically just because I'm a Metallica super fan and they're my favorite band and their guitars are great. Why are they on my list of desirable guitars? Because you can't get hold of them. You can get them if you're willing to pay a lot of money. I know a lot of people in Metallica collectors groups that have them and they probably wouldn't sell them. And if they did, they would sell them for a lot of money, which I don't have. I'd probably have to remortgage my house or something. Being a Metallica fan is probably the main reason why they're on the list. Uh, like I said, Kirk's um, kind of original signature guitar that he had with the headstock that was that way and it was all pointy and putting on his side and doing the whammy bar and stuff. It looks amazing. And no offense, but I don't really like the new ESP LTD um, headstock in comparison. But again, they had to do what they had to do. They weren't allowed to make it anymore. So what makes me want one? Again, it's probably because it's really hard to get hold of. But being a Metallica super fan or just a fan, um, I really have to own one. It was only recently in the last two, maybe one to two years that I decided that I liked Vs and Explorers after making a video where I said I don't like Vs and Explorers and Les Pauls. Um, but I can't be a Metallica super fan and love James Hetfield without an Explorer. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they're really hard to get a hold of probably makes me want it more. Like I said, Magpie, I want it because I can't have it. You can get some pre-lawsuit headstock guitars like the Crackles and the and Mirages and M2s and that kind of thing. But specifically, if I was going to get one, I'd want to get the Kirk Hammett one. You can't even get the LTD Explorers anymore. Again, lawsuit with Gibson. They're not allowed to make them anymore. Um, but yeah. I want one because I'm a Metallica fan and I love them. So that's pretty much a simple reason that's why they're on my list. And that is five or most desirable or rare guitars I'll probably never own video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like because then I know that you like it and I'll make videos just like this one. Let me know in the comments section below if you liked that video and what are your five most you know sought after guitars. Maybe I'll do a video about yours. Probably do some more because there's more than five that I like. And you know, how can you squeeze just five guitars into a video like this? It's impossible. If you're new to the channel and you found the channel from this video, do me a favor if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel and then ring the bell because then you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you guys very soon. Have a great day.